Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be creating a brand for a nail technician. And if you already don't know, my name is Kami. I am a brand designer slash strategist and on this channel I focus mainly on graphic design and I show a lot of my process and my thinking alongside with my passion projects. As always, we start with a mood board and for this brand, I am imagining a very feminine vibe I'm thinking very much pinks and reds and regarding to the typography I'm thinking of like maybe like a retro style and in my mood board as always I want to include any photography of people or places that capture the vibe and the mood that we'll be going for within this brand as well as any typography for the logo and any other assets that could be useful. So for this brand, I'm gonna be creating a business card as well. So I'm having a look at what other people have done with business cards to create something interesting. Another thing that I wanted to also include is actual nail art as this is a nail technician. Of course, we want to have some sort of nail art that represents the style of the actual person that we're going to be creating this for and again i'm imagining quite playful nail art that will fit within the vibe that we are creating this brand and after we are done with our pinterest board we're going to jump into illustrator and condense the mood board into nine photos so we want to include the categories so like any uh, photography that contains the vibes, any uh, typography, any business cards, some nail art and any other assets. And from this mood board I'm picking out some nice colours that I think could fit with this brand. And as always I want to say that um, you don't need to stick with this colour palette that you're deciding on now. Throughout your process of creating the logo variations, you may find out that this doesn't really work as well as you thought, and that is completely fine. You don't need to stick with this colour palette that you begin with at the mood board stage. And after I pick the colours, what I like to do is put a layer on top of the imagery and then play about the opacity just to create a stronger vibe with the colours that I've decided on. Next we're going to jump into Adobe fonts and have a look at some typography. Um, I think four options is a nice number and like I said before what I'm thinking about this is some retro vibes I feel like that really goes with the vibe that I'm going for so we're gonna really try and look for fonts that capture that. I really like um, anything that is curvy and out there. So one of my favourites is um, Funky Dory. That is like one of my favourite fonts. And I was really debating whether or not to use it as it is one of my favourites. And sometimes you should go out of your comfort zone. But I absolutely loved Funky Dory out of all these fonts. And it was really speaking to me. Even though the other fonts were nice as well, it wasn't speaking to me as much as Funky Dory, which is the first font. So the name of this brand, I'm thinking it's gonna be quite simple. It's gonna be called Nails by G. And I really like the letter G and I think it has so much potential to play about with it. So that's the reason why I decided to just go Nails for G, Nails by G. And after we decide on the font, what I like to do is have a look at the glyphs, see all of the options that they have, and Funky Dory has so many beautiful options. And it is some, it's nice to be able to change up the font from the, I guess, the classical way they show it, and then use the glyphs instead. And then for the G, that is where we're gonna modify um, the type. I feel like G is where we want the eyes to really focus on. So that's the reason why I'm definitely changing the G, just to create something more unique. And for the G, I'm basing it off with a glyph that is already there. 
and what I liked about this G is it it's a it's a weird one it doesn't close the circle in which I quite like I think it does look a bit kind of odd it looks kind of like a C but I like it it's honestly it's kind of like the way I sometimes write I don't close up my G's in the circle so I like it so what I wanted to really change in here was the tail and really play about the tail so I created a couple options of like what I'm thinking but basically my thought system with this was I really like the more classical G's that you can see that have like a little tail going like like I'm trying to replicate here rather than just a simple G that we had previously even though the little circle inside the G is already interesting because it doesn't close up. I wanted to create more interest by creating a tail that is more interesting. And what I liked about, another factor that I liked about this G was the end of the tail, how big and fat it was. So I wanted to literally just um, cut that out and use that, but just change the tail and how it waves around rather than just going round and flicking up. And another option that I wanted to just try out is to see what it would look like if I closed up the O inside the G, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and talking about like my process of how I like modify things, what I like to use a lot is the eraser tool although the problem with the eraser tool is that it does create a lot of points and a lot of like jagged lines so it's something that i use very carefully and when i know that i'm gonna be basically having something on top of it because i'm using so many different parts of this g that's totally fine but if you need a more of a nicer line I would recommend the pencil tool which you basically use by creating a line from one point to another and then it removes whatever's there so I think one of the things that I when I was working on it that's what I used to remove the tail that we had before before we continue if you like this video so far please give it a like and if you like it a lot please give it a subscribe it helps out my channel out a lot and yeah let's get back to it and that's us done modifying the G. I decided to go with this G compared to the other ones. I liked the fact that it started from the normal place that a G usually starts with rather than when the G's that are like usually like curvy like this start this point which I really like rather than starting on the right side because usually when it's on the right side, it's just like a little flick, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and then I kept this quite simple. I already really liked the end. I didn't want to mess about with that. And if I changed up anything else within this, I feel like it would become a bit too busy and unbalanced. So we have the G on one side and then the N on one side that is quite, it's like a focus point, you know? Of course, the G being the main focus point. So here we have the three variations of nails by G just stacked on top of each other. Then we have nails by G in a line and then the G as a logo mark itself. And then finally, we get into the colours. So for this one, uh, I start with using the colours that we've decided on in the mood board stage. And then just trying things out, seeing what works, how these colours can work together. However, this time, the colours didn't really work. They were nice colours, but they just didn't work with this brand. I think it will be definitely a good idea to use these colours in a different brand that is a bit maybe more edgy, but still on the feminine side. But it does have this edge to it because of the green. So... I did end up changing the colours a couple times just to find the right colours. It took me a little while as I did really like the green, although it really wasn't as feminine as I decided this brand would be at the beginning. So what I've decided on was 
on like a pale pink, a purpley colour and a more of a hot pink, I'd say. And that was like the main colours for the backgrounds. And then we had, I also added a white colour to it to put on the purple, as well as a bit of a paler pink than we had. And that was my colour palette here. And when you're trying these colour palettes out, I think it's definitely beneficial to have all your variations in all of these different colours that you're thinking of because if you're just, just trying three, so for example I always start with the three different variations and trying the different colours that I'm thinking of but then I expand into all of the variations with all of the colours that I'm thinking of. I think when you're deciding on these colours and when you're a bit confused if, if you don't know if it works and you don't know really what to decide on and you need to try things out, I definitely recommend putting out all of the variations and all the colour palettes, all the colour palettes that you're thinking of, rather than just the free variations of the logo. It's definitely what helped me, as I could see every single one of the variations in all of the different colours. And then what I like to do is add some photography and this photography is from Pexels and I do like how there's a little bit of um, a person grabbing cream or clouds and it's a little bit of edge I'd say. It's, it's not your usual nail art photography but I really liked how this fit. And what I do with this photography is I add the logo on top of it and just play about with it, see how it works. Just to place it in a real life kind of scenario and really bring the life into the logo and see how it would act in these scenarios. And another thing that I do with the photography is I layer the colours that I decided on on top of the photography and then play of the opacity. Finally, we're gonna get into the business cards. So I created a bit of a pattern, which is the play about with the G, just to see what I could do with the G. And this could be something that could go into the business card as a background for any information or anything like that. So on one side, I wanted to have the main name, which is Nails by G. And then on the other side, we'll have the appointments and any contact details. Unfortunately, um, my idea with the pattern didn't really work out as it was a bit too busy and you couldn't really see the G when I placed another object on top of it. I placed a little square just to allow the text to stand out on its own and not be too hard to read. So I went back to just the plain pink and having the G on the side. And then we have the information in the middle as well as the icons that represent that information. So we have a phone number, we have an Instagram and a location. And then we have an extra box for appointments. And then on the other side, we just have the nails by G very bold and in your face. And yeah, that's, that's the business card done. And one thing that I forgot to record was the social media sides of things. So um, I'm just currently working on a potential freebie. I'm just working on that for small businesses. So I wanted to use that as the social media template. So I created the social media template in Canva and basically what I did was just replace the placeholders or the images with the images that I decided that work with this brand as well as change the colours just so it just fits with the brand. But yeah I used a couple of the Canva freebies from there as well as use more general photography that you can see that we started from my mood board from Pinterest as that is something more usual that a nail tech would most likely post just constantly nails. However, just to create a bit of more interest, I think it's definitely useful to mix things up as if you look at an account of like a nail tech, all you'll see is someone's hands, which 
of course it's understandable it's that it's their service that they offer however you should definitely mix up your um content pillars so what i like to include in my content pillars is definitely photography of the services but also any value any educational or entertainment that is always a good thing to put onto your content pillars and it's definitely good to mix things up so if a nail tech always post a full picture of hand it's definitely good to mix it up jump into canva and create something that is a little bit different has maybe like a picture in a circle or a square whatever but it's not the whole picture if you know what i mean anyways um you can see at the end when i'm presenting everything back to you guys um how the social media looks like so yeah We have reached the end of my video and if you have enjoyed this video please give it a like subscribe and comment and i'll see you guys next time bye